whenever we conduct a hypothesis test, our result will be a p-value. So a p-value is just a probability. And in this case, it's the probability that our sample results were due to chance. So think to, uh, about a simple example like flipping a coin. We know the probability of tails should be 50%, but if you flip a coin five times, 10 times, 15 times, kind of a low sample size, you may get tails 60% of the time, 80% of the time, 40% of the time. You might not get that exact 50%. But that doesn't mean that the probability isn't 50-50. It just means that due to chance, you got tails a little more often or a little less often. So <clears throat> when we conduct a hypothesis test, we'll generate a p-value that's going to tell us the probability that our sample results were due to chance. If they were due to chance, that means there's going to be no reason to throw out our assumption about the null hypothesis. If they weren't due to chance, then that means the evidence is showing that our population parameter is something different than what we're assuming it to be. So if our p-value is greater than or equal to our alpha value, which is our significance level, then our results are likely to be due to chance. So that means there's no reason to throw out the null hypothesis that we're assuming from the beginning is correct. If our p-value ends up being something less than alpha, meaning we have a very small probability, then that means our results are unlikely to be due to chance. So if this probability is very small, and that's the probability that our results are due to chance, if that's very small, it means it's unlikely that the sample results we came back with were due to chance, meaning there's evidence to throw out the null hypothesis that we're assuming to be true. So if our sample results are unlikely to be true, or unlikely to be due to, to, due to chance, then our null hypothesis is unlikely to be true. So essentially what we're saying is we have sample data that conflicts with the null hypothesis. Is that enough evidence to throw out the null hypothesis? That is, a small p-value discredits H0, that null hypothesis. When we talk about actually writing our concluding statements, we'll phrase our conclusions as either rejecting or failing to reject the null hypothesis. So we'll generate a p-value, compare that to our significance level, alpha, and then we'll make a decision to either reject or fail to reject the null hypothesis. If our p-value is something greater than or equal to our value for alpha, then we fail to reject the null hypothesis. So our p-value is relatively large. It means it's likely that our sample results were due to chance. There's not enough information to discredit that null hypothesis. But if our p-value ends up being something less than alpha, there is enough evidence to suggest that that null hypothesis is discredited. So in that case, we reject the null hypothesis. Something we want to keep in mind throughout hypothesis testing is that we're not proving anything to be true or false. We're merely stating what the data suggests. If we collected a different random sample, or if we collected a larger random sample in the first place, it's possible we could come to different conclusions. Because again, we're not taking all the information into account. We're not surveying everyone in the entire population, or taking measurements on every item in the population. We're just stating what we can conclude based off the sample data we've collected. If we fail to reject the null hypothesis, what we're saying is there is not sufficient evidence
in our sample data to conclude that our parameter is any different than we stated it to be in the null hypothesis. So we start off with the assumption that that null hypothesis is true. If there's not enough evidence to reject it, so we fail to reject it, there's not enough evidence to say that our parameter is any different than what we originally stated it to be. If we reject the null hypothesis, then we're saying that there is sufficient evidence that our population parameter is somehow different than stated in that null hypothesis. If we reject the null hypothesis, we're saying somehow it's different. So we turn to the alternative as our only alternative conclusion. And then after stating that we either reject or fail to reject the null hypothesis, then we'll add some additional interpretation. So we'll interpret our results in the context of the data. So we'll make a decision about rejecting or failing to reject the null hypothesis, state what that means symbolically, but also add a contextual interpretation. So coming to a very clear, easy to read conclusion about what the results of our hypothesis test tell us.